Hey, I'm Daria. I'm currently working on a blazer style dress pattern, which has a one piece sleeve as dresses usually do. However, I want to give it a more blazer appearance by sending the sleeve in as I would do for a blazer with this nice volume at the sleeve cap. In this video, I'll show you my process of sending the sleeve in and share my experience and thoughts. To begin, I'll prepare the pattern pieces. The pattern for the luster blazer dress will be available soon, along with the sewing tutorial, of course. So stay tuned to my channel or check to see if the video for the new pattern has already been released. Next, I prepare the sleeve piece. I reinforced the sleeve cap using tailoring interfacing. I highly recommend using this interfacing, which has a, such a slight splash. Adding interfacing to the sleeve cap enhances its structure when it's eased. I sew a dart on a sleeve and proceed with the sleeve assembly until it's ready to be set in. So look at the sleeve and its sleeve cap height. Now I need to determine the section that requires easing. Typically the ease of the sleeve cap is approximately half its height, but I'm going one centimeter below the exact halfway point. I mark the points where the gathering lines will start and end. To create the gathers, I increase the stitch length to 4 mm and stitch two lines along the edge of the sleeve cap. The first line goes about 6 or 7 mm from the edge and the second one is 12 or 14 mm away. Gather the sleeve cap, I gently pull the bobbin threads. For a minimal gathering, there shouldn't be any noticeable creases or gathers between the stitch lines, but the length of the sleeve cap should decrease. I use my fingers to ensure there are no creases between the stitch lines. The maximum amount of ease concentrated at the top section of the sleeve cap. Now the gathering is done, I press it to diminish the gathering effect. The initial option is to steam the sleeve cap while it's laid on a board, like this. This method works well when dealing with a small ease, such as for blouses, and this pressing could be enough. However, in my case, I need to ease a bigger amount, and it requires more steaming. I position the sleeve cap on the sleeve pressing board. It's ideal to have a specialized tailoring board for easing sleeves, but I don't have one. I press the sleeve cap seam allowance only at the gathered section with steam until there are no more gathers after the stitch lines towards the sleeve. The edge may remain slightly wavy and with gathers. Another approach is to press on the dress form, working on the seam allowance section until the gathering fades away. If you don't have a sleeve board or dress form, there's a fourth option. Position the sleeve as shown, hold it with one hand, and use the tip of an iron to press the gather seam allowance from the wrong side. Let's proceed with the setting in the sleeve. I have lined the seams and the shoulder with the center notch. I have something to say about using pins. Some claim that it's mandatory to base the sleeve in. Yes, it's a classic tailoring approach, but I prefer to skip hand stitching as much as possible. I would say my approach falls somewhere between tailoring and industrial sewing techniques. So I rely on pins for this task. However, if you are uncertain, it's better to baste it in, and I recommend starting to baste from the top of the sleeve toward the both sides. The key point I'd like to show here is the importance of using your fingers to gauge the ease while basting or pinning. Try to sense when it has been eased sufficiently, yet remains manageable when you flatten it with your finger. This skill becomes particularly valuable when you haven't done any pressing preparation to the sleeve but still need to ease it. If you have eased the sleeve enough by pressing and have checked the length of the armhole and the sleeve cap, you will have to make this manipulation minimally. Let's stitch the sleeve in. 
which side should you stitch from? In my opinion, this question is debatable. Both ways are possible. Sewing with the slip cap facing up allows you to control the gathers better, especially if you have not made to gather and stitch lines and want to ease the sleeve while sewing. Alternatively, you can sew from the armhole, as the sewing machine feed dog will naturally ease the lower layer of the fabric. I use both methods depending on the specific needs of each case. Here I'm sewing from the armhole and aligning the sleeve edge with the armhole edge using my fingers. Yes, I'm stitching through the pins. I use these thin flat headed pins. Thicker pins won't work for this task. When stitching, avoid stretching the armhole by following the natural curve of the armhole. I also recommend stitching the lower section of the armhole once more for added security. Now I have a stitch line right between the gathering stitch lines. After fitting, I remove them. Next, I press the seam using the tip of the iron on the upper section of the sleeve cap. It's important not to press the entire armhole, just this top section. So far, this is how it looks. To achieve a blazer-like look, I'll insert a sleeve head. I have a small pattern for it. You can cut using your sleeve pattern piece or buy a pre-made like this one. Sleeve heads are used to create and maintain the nice shape of the sleeve cap. They add structure by filling the sleeve cap, ensuring that it doesn't collapse or appear flat. I'll use thin polyester padding for making this. Sleeve heads can be made from various materials, including cotton, wool, felt, fleece, flannel, depending on the desired flavor of padding and structure. Here I have two options and I will use a softer one to make mine. I mark the front side and begin to pin it down, aligning the notch with the center and easing it a little bit. So here is what I have. I will stitch it to the seam allowance 2 or 3 mm toward the edge from the sleeve seam line. I stitch from the armhole. This is how it looks and from the right side we have a nice sleeve cap filled with a sleeve head. I put the dress on a dress form and check if both sleeves are sewn in evenly. They should be oriented in the same direction. Let's switch to the shoulder pads. Shoulder pads are available in a variety of shapes, sizes and thicknesses, so it's important to consider the look you want to achieve and the shoulder structure you need. In my case, I'm using these shoulder pads. They aren't thick, but they will enhance the shoulder of the dress anyway. Sometimes shoulder pads have an inner cotton layer that you can use to sew them in place. I found that the best results are achieved when the edge of the pad follows the shape of the armhole. I join the back and the front bodice pieces together at the shoulders to determine where is the back and where is the front folded along the center notch line and the bigger half is the back. I trim the edge of the shoulder pad to match the same curve. My shoulder pad turns out 7 mm tall. I align the center of the shoulder pad with the shoulder by just inserting a pin. Note that the shoulder pad should curve in the opposite direction of the wrong side of the garment. To ensure the edges align correctly, 
I place the armhole around the shoulder pad, not the other way around. This prevents the pad from appearing creased when the garment is turned out. Next, I hand sew the pad in place using a simple hand stitch along the seam allowance on the armhole. However, it's crucial not to pull the thread tightly during the process, as doing so can distort the height and the shape of the pad. And as the result, now you can leave it as it is or gently, almost not touching the sleeve cap. Press it. Also, you can go with steam along the whole sleeve to create a soft fold. And there is a sleeve cap right after sewing the sleeve in. Here is the final result of the dress. The complete pattern will be available soon and I hope you feel inspired to sew this dress. If you found the video useful and discovered something new for yourself, please give a video a like. This is a huge support to the video and me. Thank you very much for watching.